page seven, question five. So we were talking yesterday about two scenarios uh, where we have non-linear relationships and how we can still use linear correlation to help us. In fact, it's really helpful because it allows us, when you've got a set of data, to work out the equation linking the, the two things. Um, and the two main things we came across were uh, exponential relationships and power relationships. And the clues are always in the question as to which of these we are dealing with. There's a very big clue here, but I can never remember which one involves logging both axes and which one involves logging one axis. So I look through the question and stumble across this. This is the formula that they tell me. So even though that's buried late in the question, I'm going to start with that. And I need to identify what my variables are, because obviously y and x would be nice and easy, but they're not using y and x. They're using w and m. So m is effectively my y, and w is effectively my x. And you know, it might be that that's a really helpful thing to write when you sort of you know have this in an exam, just to sort of help remind yourself. I don't know. So this isn't exponential growth because with exponential growth, the x value, which is normally t, is in the power because we are multiplying every so often. So this is a power relationship. And again, although there's a big clue here, I can't remember whether that means I need to log just the y-axis or both axes. Both axes. So I'm going to log both sides. I'm going to go through this process that I recommend you do every time with one of these questions. And I'm going to skip a couple of steps to get me straight through to... So again, I'm going to look for my variables. I'm looking for an m. Well, that's now log m. And I'm looking for a w. That's log w. Right. So I know I need to log both my axes. My x-axis is w, so that's there. And my y-axis is m, so that's there. So I know this um, line of best fit, um, whatever it is, I don't know yet whether it's positive or negative, will look something like that if it is a power relationship. I'll get a straight line on this graph if it's a power relationship. And the intercept with the y-axis will give me um, that. And the gradient will just be m, the power up here. And, and you know, the great news is we don't have to draw the graph, we're given that information straight away. So all you've got to remember is which of those is the intercept and which is the gradient. First thing that we've got to do is we've got to calculate uh, the product moment. Don't copy and complete the table, unless you've already done so, because we can use log uh, in the product moment cal correlation calculation. So you need to pre calculation with stats mode. And you need to enter that data, but you need to enter the log of both columns. So in your x column, you're going to type in log 3, log 4, log 6, log 8, log 11. And in the y column, log 23, you're going to log both axes. So you don't have to work out the log, write it down, and then type in that rounded number. The calculator will let you do it all in one go. Were you, were you not here, Pat? No. Uh, if you could send me some videos. Yeah, it's just uploading. I'm really sorry, Pat. I thought everyone was here yesterday. I, I apologise that you're playing catch up. What's wrong? Right? Sorry. I'm, this is the only. This is the, the sort of the, the, the end of that bit from yesterday's lesson. So yesterday's lesson is uploading as I speak. It is 17% uploaded. That's full right. internet. I'll get that over the weekend. Sorry. Oh right, yeah, so this is going to be a, a bit... Once you've watched the video, it'll, it'll be James is very helpful. Yes, my, um, my batteries for my thingy are dreadfully low. Okay, are they so, so low that it's unusable? Uh, yeah, every time I like press X. Okay, so borrow that for now. I mean, I, I, change batteries. I, I will have to ask you to... Supply your own batteries, I'm afraid I can't afford to have. I've got given a calculator, one and a half. 
So what R is measuring is the correlation. But because these two things are not related in a straight line way, you wouldn't get a correlation. But if we log both axes, we should get a straight line. That's what we're so the, the video yesterday um, will explain. Uh, carry on, do the rest of the question once you've got R. Um, I'm assuming you're going to get a value of R which indicates a nice strong positive correlation. One is close to positive, sorry, one is perfect positive, minus one is perfect negative, but just looking at the numbers, it, yeah, it's definitely going to be positive. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's a bit. Oh, does it not give you that in the book? No. Okay, sorry. The regression line equation they give you is. Yeah, there you go. That's what it should be. So what happens is, rather than at GCSE where we um, draw a scatter diagram and draw a line of best fit for ourselves, what happens at A level is they give you the equation of the line of best fit. Now normally lines of best fit, or well, straight line graphs, are written like this, y equals mx by c, where that's the gradient, and that's where it crosses the y-axis. For some reason, with Lighter with a um, correlation, they give you the intercept first and then the gradient second, they write it that way around. We don't have to calculate that, it'll always be given to us in the question. Right. So this graph I know starts at 0 0.464, which because of this process, which is explained in yesterday's video, I know is the log of this multiplier here. How do I undo logging? Uh, no, so LNing, I undo by doing e yeah. to the power. Log is log to the base 10, mm -hmm. so I undo it by doing 10 to the power of. Uh, 
and n is the gradient itself. Again, sorry, I'm, uh, that would all be much clearer if you've seen that lesson. So I have, um, so, and let's look up. Uh, so very, very strong positive correlation, almost a perfect straight line. Um, and so because of that, because we get a perfect straight line with the log axes, which they refer to as coding the data, so that's a good way of saying it, because the coded data has almost perfect positive correlation, that implies that this model is a very good model. I then take my line of best fit equation and interpret it, so the intercept is the log of k, so that's 2.91, and the gradient is the power, so I know that the relationship linking width and mass is this. Mass is equal to 2.91 times uh, w to the power of 1.88. And so what we've been able to do, just from five pairs of numbers, we've been able to get an equation linking those two things. How did we know it was a power relationship? not exponential, well, we're given that in the question. So we're told that it's a power relationship, not exponential, and we're also given the clue here that I can never remember which one needs both logs and which one needs only one log axis. Okay. So what we've been doing is we've been looking at GCSE correlation just amped up a little bit. Plotting points on a graph, looking for a straight line. We now don't have to be subjective about whether or not that straight line, those points show a correlation. We have this value r. r is a coefficient that measures the strength of correlation. One means the points on my scatter diagram line up perfectly in an uphill direction. Minus one means they they don't. They sorry. They line up perfectly in a downhill direction. Zero means there's no pattern, and of course you've got all the values in between. So we've got that way. And then we've rather than having to draw that line of best fit by i, we have a way of calculating the line of best fit, which we no longer have to worry about. It's given to us in the question. And once we've got that equation, we can use that equation to make predictions, and we can use it if we're dealing with coded data to work backwards to get the original equation. So, we always do that with a sample of data. So it might be that, you know, here we had five measurements from an experiment. Um, or we might have done a sample of height and arm span of 30 people. So what can we tell from a sample and the correlation that it shows? What's the implications um, for the wider population? So I think that's what I'd like to talk about now. So the implications... Uh, Of correlation. And there's two things, one of which we've mentioned before, and one of which um, is new, and which we will spend the rest of this lesson talking about. So, the one I mentioned at the uh, it was in Tuesday's lesson, was if we plotted a scatter diagram of um, every day in Wellington, we measured the number, we, we didn't measure, we asked a shop how many sunglasses they'd sold, and we asked a different shop how many cold drinks they'd sold, um, I suspect we would probably see a positive correlation. So we definitely get a correlation between those two things. But we mustn't get carried away. That doesn't mean that wearing sunglasses makes you thirsty. Neither does it mean that having a cold drink makes your eyes more sensitive to the sun, to the sun and drives you in to buy a pair of sunglasses. So there's a relationship there, but we're not dealing there with a causal relationship. We're not dealing there with causation. So two things can be related there can be a correlation there without one actually affecting 
directly affecting the other. And of course, in this case, there's a there's something else at play, isn't it? So if we plotted instead um, the mean temperature on that particular day and plotted that against either sunglass sales or cold drink sales, then again, we'd see a positive correlation. And in this case, that probably is causal. If it's hot, you want to drink a cold drink. So the first thing to be aware of is the difference between correlation and causation. The value of R measures how points line up on a straight line graph. It tells us nothing about causation. So we can't interpret anything about causation. That's common sense. That's common sense. Except it's common sense in this situation, but of course in some situations it's really hard. So those people searching for a cure for dementia, for example, um, you know, there's all sorts of studies going on where they are finding that you know, people with dementia show these particular um, uh, um, um, symptoms or maybe they in the past have done these particular things and you know it's really hard knowing whether that's just a correlation or whether that's something causing it um, and if you go back in history um, you know smoking for example used to be a really socially acceptable pastime you know everyone did it I mean so not, not, not in my time I've never smoked but you know so you know back in the sort of the back in the back in the day in the 30s um, and and it was only relatively recently, not you know, just before I was born, that the link between some fairly unpleasant diseases and smoking was was noticed. And there was a time when you know it was just tricky to spot whether that was a correlation or whether the smoking was actually causing those particular nasty diseases. So um, yeah, it, it it can be tricky. So we mustn't assume correlation means causation. That's the first thing. The second thing, which I want to spend the rest of the lesson talking about, is this. Um, if I identify a correlation from a sample, so let's say I do a survey of the number of hours you spend doing homework in year 11 and your average GCSE grade. Now I'm hoping that we'd see a pretty strong correlation there. We'd get a value of R which I hope would be fairly high. I hope that people that do homework tend to do better at their GCSEs. You've come in at just the right time, Grace. We're just about to start talking about something new. So if I do any sort of survey with a sample of people, and let's say I get, I don't know, a value of R of 0 0.8, does that mean if I did the same survey with the whole population, so it might be I was doing just a survey of year 11, so I chose 30, if I did a survey with the whole population, would I see the same correlation? If I can see a correlation in a sample, is it safe to assume I'm going to see the same correlation in the population? Well, it depends, doesn't it? And, and um, it depends, obviously, on how well you've constructed your sample. Um, but can we measure statistically the fact that we've got a correlation here whether or not that means we're going to get the same correlation with the population. And um, that's what we're going to talk about. And the way we do it is we use hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing. Oh, look, Isabel. Jeez. Is that a look of joy on your face there? Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how I can take the results of a experiment involving a sample and make inferences about the same thing in the whole population. Clearly, this is going to have a factor. If this is really, really, really close to 1, or really, really close to minus 1, it's a pretty convincing argument. If it's down at 0 0.4, well, I don't know. So there's going to be implications here. There's also going to be implications with sample size. I mean, if I have a sample of 2, I'm always going to get r equals 1, because 2 points on a, well, or minus 1, 2 points on a scatter diagram will always line up perfectly. So whatever I investigate, if I investigate the length of your toenails and your average GCSE score, and I only ask two people, I'm going to get R equal to 1 or minus 1, because those two points will either line up like that or they'll line up like that. No correlation there, but you know, you'll get that from the sample. So we need to sample size is clearly um, an implication as well. R is the product moment correlation coefficient, PMCC, of a sample. We have a different letter to uh, 
indicate the product moment correlation coefficient of the population. We can rarely calculate that because the population is normally so big that we don't have all the data. But it is called rho, which is another Greek letter. I fear we're going to meet rho before too long because we're already up to Omicron. We've got pi next. I think rho comes after that. So, but rho is uh, a symbol. Looks like a more like a p. It's sort of like a, a slightly curvy lowercase p. So if we know what R is, which is the sample PMCC, product moment correlation coefficient, what can we tell about rho, which is the population product moment coefficient, correlation coefficient? And let me explain how we do it. And for this we need our formula books. I'm sort of hoping at this point you're going to reach into your folders and get the books and get your formula books. I have four formula books, which I'm happy to distribute. And you need to turn to page 37 on your formula books. So I don't why I've got a tape, I'm going to hope you some of you will have. an example from page 10, but I mean you, you don't have to um, project it. Okay, so here we've got a set of data. All right, a set of data. I'm going to tell you for this set of data what R is. Okay, um, so we don't have to bother calculating that because anyone could do that. It's 0 0.1149. So for this sample in this question, R is equal to 0 0.1149. It's a relatively unconvincing positive correlation, mm -hmm. almost no correlation at all. What we're being asked to do is say, OK, that's what I've got for this sample. This is a sample of eight days. Can I infer anything from the population as a whole? And I'm being asked to test at the 10% level of significance. If you, if you remember means 90% of the time I'd be correct making this assumption. So here's what we do. We say, OK, for the population, I'm going to start by assuming my null hypothesis is there is no correlation. And we always do this at the start of any of these hypothesis testing in correlation questions. Even if there is a really strong correlation? Yes, so in this we would, even if there is a really strong correlation with the sample, that's yeah. right, yeah. Always start with this. Uh, we then look at the question. So we are looking for evidence of positive correlation. So my alternative hypothesis is that the population has rho greater than zero. So there is a positive correlation there. So I'm looking here at a one-tailed test. A one-tailed test. So I'm looking for positive correlation. So I look up. We haven't really got the concept of a sort of graph like this anymore. That was what we do with hypothesis testing when we're dealing with probabilities. But we still, if you remember with graphs like this, we have a value after which we say, yes, something's changed. And we reject the null hypothesis and accept the um, alternative hypothesis. So we do the same here. We, rather than saying about a graph, we say, right, what's the critical value? What's the critical value? What's the point at which? What's the value of R which would say, OK, this isn't true anymore, we've got some evidence of a positive correlation. And that's what page 37 in the formula book gives us. So can I invite you to turn to page 37 in the formula book? Uh, and you'll find a table. And that table um, has 
a lot of stuff on there, most of which can be ignored. Now, the first thing is we are looking at product moment cor uh, correlation. Spearman's is a different measure of correlation, which some of you will have come across in other subjects. Um, so we're looking at product moment. We are, do you remember it said the 10% level? So we are um, dealing with this column here, this 0.1 column, that's the 10% column. And do you remember how many values we had in our sample? One, two, three, four, five, we had eight values, eight values. Okay, so what we do is we go to the 10% column and we go down to eight values and that's our critical value. Okay, let me write it. So if R is bigger than this, bigger because we're looking for a positive correlation, if we're looking for negative, it would be if it was smaller than that. If R is bigger than this, we reject the null hypothesis. Oh, R isn't bigger than this. Last time. So this is the point at which I would need to see the value of R in, in order for me to say, yeah, there's a positive correlation in the population. As it is, 0 0.1149 is clearly less than 0 0.5067. So let's return to the question. So we're looking for evidence of a positive correlation. So there is no evidence of a positive correlation. So we have stated our hypotheses, we have found the critical value, we've compared it with our value of R, which is the sample correlation coefficient, and it wasn't big enough, so we have no evidence. Can I invite you to have a go at uh, page 11, question 4 and 5? They use slightly different wording in four. They say positive linear relationship. That's the same thing as positive correlation. So you do have to whack this into your calculator to work out R. But no coding, no logging involved. We think this is a straight line relationship, not a power relationship, not uh, exponential. Another positive correlation, so again we're looking for greater than one. I don't think either example say it'd be the negative correlation, but if it was, it would be less than one. And you'd be looking for a value below the critical value.
what we'll do is we'll do four and six, because six is a negative correlation example, just so we've got both covered. So this time we're at the 5% significance level. So 5% is, is harsher, it's looking for a higher value because that's being right 95% of the time. So in this case, you should have got 0 0.686, which is bigger than um, 0 0.6215. So that is convincing. So we reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence of a positive, or in this case, they're calling it, calling it a linear correlation between English and maths marks. Um, and in fact, I, I, think, I think they would need to say positive linear correlation. I'd just say positive correlation. So question six is just a, is a negative correlation example. Critical value is positive, but you need to make it negative because we're now looking for a negative correlation. So you just you just take you know you just make it negative. So the critical value is the negative version of what you see in the table. And we're looking for something smaller than that because we're now in the negatives. Thank you. 
more negative than the critical values in the mix. So, we, you know, we're not far off. So I, I you know, I, I've sort of said this. It's not like there's no evidence, but it looks like this researcher is incorrect. There's not enough evidence to suggest a negative correlation. It's not negative enough. It's not negative enough. Anyone want to ask questions about that? Sort of hoping, you know, we sort of hope this is one of the things that comes up because we can calculate R, we can interpret the uh, regression line coefficients, and uh, this isn't too hard. Now, both of those have been one tailed tests where we've either been looking for positive correlation or negative correlation. Do you, you may remember that we had um, two tailed tests when we did hypothesis testing. And um, that comes up as well with this. So I'm going to look at example three on the previous page firstly. The wording in this question is subtly different. So here we are told that the scientist believes there is no correlation. So we're not looking for positive correlation, we're not looking for negative correlation, we're trying to show there's no correlation. It, it may be that there actually is a positive correlation, or there actually is a negative correlation. So we may have to reject the hypothesis. So we need, to, we need to be checking both ends. So this is a two-tailed test, and you may remember that with a two-tailed test, you halve your significance level at each end. So what we are saying is, we need to look up the 5% critical value in this case because we're not looking for either positive or negative, we're just trying to show that there is no correlation. So our setup is just the same. We've got a sample value of R, which from, is from 30 observations, so it's a pretty decent sample size. And then for the population, we, even though this is a different sort of thing, we still have our null hypothesis the same, that um, rho is zero. So the population, our null hypothesis is that rho is zero, and our alternative hypothesis is that rho isn't zero. Not bigger than or smaller than, we don't know. We're just saying it isn't zero. So 10% significance level. This is a two-tailed test, so use the 5% critical values.
So I look at my 30 critical value. Making sure that I'm using the 5% column as the second column. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at both ends, so it's plus or minus there. So I can reject the null hypothesis if my value of R is bigger than plus 0 0.3061 or smaller than minus 0 0.3061. And as it happens, that's what we've got. We've got, sorry, I'm running out of space here, uh, minus 0 0.45 is less than minus 0 0.3061. So there is evidence at the 10% level of significance that there is a correlation. So we can reject the null hypothesis. We do have evidence of a correlation. It's evidence of a negative correlation, but we're not worried about that. What we're just worried about is the fact that we have shown that there's a correlation rather than no correlation. So yeah, this is the tobacco company desperately trying to prove that there isn't a link between its cigarettes and some unpleasant disease. So it's saying, right, let's test at the 10% significance level. Unfortunately, there is, a, there, is a, there is a link. Actually, it's a negative correlation, so I don't know how that would work anyway. So, so there is evidence at the 10% level of significance. You wouldn't perhaps be expected to write that because that's what you've been asked to do, but um, that there is a correlation. I would add to that, you know, so we reject the null hypothesis, but I, I, I think it's always important to put it in context to say, actually, which means that there is evidence of a correlation. So let's just do one example of that, which you find on page 13, question 6. Remember, you need to halve the significance level when you look up your um, critical value. How did it go? Well, question six was missing. There was no, wasn't printed out. Right. What I did is I took a bigger test and. Um, Trimmed it down, so that's probably where that went. Okay, so it's on the mark scheme, it's on that. Yeah, yeah, so it was, and then, the test was too but so And some of the, and honestly, some of the mark schemes not there on that, on the yeah, right way, which yeah, is the yeah. question three to five. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you can work it out. No, I can, I was just checking it. I was just checking more the question six wasn't meant to be. Yeah, no, 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 it was, um, it was, I thought I'd changed the numbers, but clearly hadn't. Had had no so worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll make sure it's better next time. Soundtrack of my GCS, my O level revision. Exactly. On my, on my, on my Walkman. Yeah. Slippery wet wet. Great. I always listen to that one song. Quite a rude now. Someone your age shouldn't really listen to that. No, when, when people say words, it just sounds as well as my head. Well, what was it? What did he say?
I'm sorry, these questions always start with until whack the data in. Right, it was the wording um, which was very subtle, but it said. Uh, so the other two examples we've done, they said test for a positive correlation, test for a negative correlation. Yeah. So here it just said the scientist believes there is no correlation. Okay, okay. So it doesn't say whether the, whether there's no correlation, but actually it's positive or negative. Yeah. And that's why 13 is the same. Um, gone too far. You've gone too far this time. Uh, so this one, it says, uh, it is suggested there is no correlation. So it's, if there's a mention of positive or negative, you know it's a one tail test. Okay. But, um, Yes. So I hope you're looking at the 0 0.025 column on the table for your critical value. Because it's half half the significance level because it's a two-tailed two -tailed test. So the critical value is either plus or minus 0.6319. Our value, which is positive, is below that. So there's not enough evidence. Um, so the suggestion is correct. The suggestion is correct. The, suggest the, the evidence supports the suggestion. There's not enough evidence to suggest there's a correlation. So it looks like there is no correlation there. Um, right, I've lost my mask here. So, are, are we okay with that? Can I answer, please, answer, answer any questions? Okay, now I. There we go. Um, now I hesitate to sort of point you to Mass Genie because I sort of hope you're focusing on your trick now, but um, you know, I, I, I want to just show you um, where you can find this. So we're well into A level mechanics and statistics. I mean, the good news is there's not a huge amount there, isn't there? And you know, we will, we will do the full syllabus, but um, um, yeah, fortunately, mechanics and statistics is not a great deal. Uh, what we have covered this week is here and here. So non-linear regression is what we did yesterday and at the beginning of today. Um, unfortunately, uh, they've got one here that's a power relationship, but they just, they just get you to do the log thing, rearranging. The two examples they've got are both exponential relationships. That doesn't mean they're always exponential, but, but there you go. So th they're worth doing. They're worth doing, um, uh, and that's, that's there. And then what we've just done is here, 
And um, that first question in particular is really good because it just it covers pretty much everything. So you've got, I mean, please don't draw the scatter diagram. Calculate R. That's the way of confirming what sort of correlation you've got. But you've got the regression line. You've got to interpret the numbers. Oh, it gives you the product moment, so you don't have to even do that. And then you've got a hypothesis test question. So um, those two things are really worth doing. That one and that one. Not this one. We haven't done that, so don't. Um, so should we do just to finish off this correlation testing thing um, and um, have a go at question two? Just see if you can do question two. And I'm not going to. Oh, it tells you it's a two-tailed test. Okay. Let's do number three, where you've got to work out whether it's a two-tailed or a one-tailed. Number three. Just do number three. That might be us done. Then you have half lessons in uh, psychology these days, isn't it? Right. <laughs> you come, come on and enjoy the fun, Ellie. Come and take a seat. Speak, speak now. What was it? Um, I forgot how you work out two tail testing. Does it mention either positive or negative correlation? Yeah. So, our null hypothesis will always be the same, but we're being asked to check if actually it's positive. to give you pain is really tough. So 12, 8, George, mm. is there enough evidence? There is, there is not because 0 0.3636 is smaller than, so there is not enough evidence to suggest a positive correlation. Uh, remember, for those of you not in London tomorrow, have a lovely day, those that are, stay safe. Um, I, um, I would like you to come to an hour of maths, which you can do period four, or you can also, if you would rather get it out of the way earlier in the day, you could come period one, where I have the other group. Do we have to come to you have to come to one or the other, yes.